in early spring in the late afternoon, on a beautiful day, I ran into a pair of very vocal barred owls. Clearly, they were being protective. So the assumption was there must be a nest cavity nearby. Now there was still a little snow on the ground, but barred owls are well adapted to life in the north. Here I could see both the male and female together chanting at me. After a long search, finding the nest cavity meant I was able to set up the video camera and leave in the hopes the parent would return. And sure enough, was able to get this great footage. Now, seven weeks later, the leaves have returned to the forest. Mom is seen going back to the tree cavity. I'm actually very far from this tree with the zoom lens on the video camera. I could never get anywhere near it. But still, with a good zoom lens, I should be able to see the chicks. Day after day, flight after flight, no chicks visible. They must be too small for me to see yet. It's going to take another trip. Eight weeks have gone by, and we get our first glimpse of these adorable, tiny barred owl chicks. They should be there for another two or three weeks before they fledge. The following week, I'm in for a shock. What I thought would be a routine film turned out to be something completely different. I need to take a closer look. This is making me nervous. There should have been two chicks in there, and I'm only seeing one. Clearly, this little one left that nest cavity far too early, at least a couple of weeks. That can be incredibly dangerous. I hope she's okay. We're going to get a ladder and bring her back into the nest cavity so our parents can take care of her, and this way predators can't get to her. But first, I want to make sure she's all right. Normally, baby birds on the ground is very normal. That's part of the fledge and you should leave them alone. In this case, I knew this was premature because I was filming and I was there at the time when they were first hatched. That clicking sound that you hear from the beak of the chick, that's a warning. They're trying to say, don't bother me or I can bite. My first goal was just to make sure that she wasn't injured. That was a 20 foot drop. She was very lucky to have landed in a soft pile of leaves and just miss a log that was only inches from where she hit the ground. I think she's okay. You okay? I'm sorry you fell out of the nest. We're going to get her back. This way your mom can take care of you. Now, I've certainly done a lot of hiking in my day, but never with a big ladder. And let me tell you, that was a really, really long walk. I had to work very fast. I wanted to minimize the stress both to the chick that I had in the bag, as well as the chick that was up in the nest cavity and the parents that were watching me. You okay, little fella? Okay, I've got the chick in this bag. It's gonna be a very dangerous climb because the ladder's not tall enough, but it's all we have. We have no other option. So I wanna be real careful with her and see if we can get her back to her, her nest cavity. Okay, come with me, little one. We'll get you back home. Unfortunately, the only ladder I could find was 16 feet tall, and that nest had to be at least 20 feet up. Because of the angle of the tree, I had a big problem here. The ladder was trying to fall to the left. Now, I had to get around this branch, but I've got the chick on my right side. I had to be incredibly careful. I kept the chick on my right because I was worried about the ladder falling to the left. In a perfect situation, there's probably a lot safer ways to have done this, but I'm in the middle of the forest and it's not a perfect situation. The most dangerous part of this is up near the top of the ladder. It's incredibly wobbly. Now, the only way that I could get up to that nest cavity, which is way too tall for this ladder, was to actually take my left arm and kind of hug the tree on one side so the ladder didn't come out from under me. 
This was clearly going to be a stretch, and I assure you, I actually did a dry run without the chick, just in case. It took a while to come up with a technique so I could get up high enough, and eventually I realized by putting my arm over the top of this branch and around the tree, I could actually stabilize the ladder enough. My heart was beating out of my chest because there was only one chance to get this right. Now I've got the chick. It's time to make it happen. This has got to be quick. I need to leave my hand in front of the nest cavity. Remember, there's a second chick inside the hole, and I have no idea how it's going to react. Success. I cannot tell you how great that felt to be such a positive influence on that little chick's life. That vocalization from the parent, that was the first time I heard that in the weeks of filming. And every time after that, it was always the same, a gentle, single hoot. It made me think, did the owl actually appreciate that I did that? Did it actually see that and see the chick go back into the nest cavity? That was absolutely amazing. She's back in the nest cavity and everything's fine. Awesome. Four days have now passed since the rescue. Were the chicks there? Absolutely yes. Both checks were doing fantastic. Yet another week goes by. It's incredible how quickly these chicks are growing and yawning. And my wife, Anne Marie, has some amazing opportunities for wildlife photography. These chicks are obviously getting close to a proper fletch. It's been such an amazing journey watching them grow so quickly and being a part of their little lives. While filming this, I couldn't help but wonder if I'd ever see him again. I mean, I knew I couldn't get back for at least a week. Barred owls grow up quickly. They have to, to be the great survivors that they are. On this trip, the nest was empty. But the parrot was nearby. Being harassed by a blue jay actually gave it away. And that meant the chicks were close. It took hours to find one of the chicks. It was about 25 feet up on a sapling tree. One of the parents was nearby, calmly watching. She seemed very relaxed. I think she was getting used to having me around. Now this chick was actually the same one that was the rescue chick. It was identifiable by a mark above its right eyelid. But what about the other sibling? The frantic search went on for hours. Hearing the parent was a great clue. Not far from the nest, but very well hidden, the other sibling was actually on the ground. But no worries at all. At this stage, that's perfectly normal. What an absolute honor to see that both chicks have made it. Another week has passed. I only get brief glimpses of the chicks, not enough to film. But now I can check out the base of the nest and see if I can figure out what the owls are feeding the chicks. Right behind this nest cavity, there's a small brook that goes through the forest. And apparently, there's crayfish. We can find the shells, the tails, the claws. So the adult owls are actually fishing for crayfish, bringing those up to the babies and feeding them. And we can find the evidence here. I can't help but wonder what the future is gonna be like for these little chicks. Each night when I hear chanting of barred owls, I most certainly will be thinking of them. Thank you.